So, um, welcome everybody to the DPL wannabe boff. Uh, it's on. Um, our uh, facilitator, uh, moderator here is Stefano Zaccaroli, the DPL. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. So, um, I start with an apology. I completely misread the schedule of this day, so that means that I didn't expect this buff to be at 10 a.m., so it's way less prepared than I wanted it to be, but okay, we, c we could do it anyway. And the idea of the buff was to actually, well, try to dispel some myth about the job of the DPL. I think we know in general in the project way less about what the DPL do than uh, what we should know and uh, also to ask you for a review of... Okay. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. So the idea was to share some experiences among uh, past DPLs, and now I can use the plural, given that Steve has arrived, and uh, people who are interested, potentially even, in becoming DPLs, explaining a bit what their role is about, and also ask you for a sort of a review of the especially of the communication stuff I've been doing and how I've been doing that in to see what we can improve. So the, I guess the, the first message on, the, on what the job of the DPLC is about, which I want to share, is that it's way less about changing things than how it is about you know, um, doing routine stuff in the way you, you, you see fit. So I, I remember having read a lot of b -dale. Do you want to come on stage? <laughs> Steve, you too. You know, that's an advantage of being DPL. You can call the all DPL on stage and they will come. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, my, my fir the first thing which surprised me a bit when I became, in the first few months of being DPL is that I, was a, I had an idea proposing my platform to change a lot of stuff, but actually the actual amount of work you need to put in day-to-day -day activity is way more than you can expect. So uh, you will receive a lot of requests to moderate conflicts, to uh, press inquiry, to interviews, and a lot of this routine work, which is actually a lot of work, and uh, in, in, in essence can uh, reduce a lot the time you have to actually change things. So. My first suggestion is that if you're planning to run for DPL, well, you need to have a, a good workflow to deal with day-to-day -day activities before you think about what you want to really change in Debian. So just a quick poll. Who, is, who in this room have ever thought, even for a moment, and then forget about it, to run for DPL? That's good enough. I thought you were, I would have seen no hands at all. <laughs> Yes. So, um, so you should have you should have a good election this year. So, um, <laughs> Ian, we've run out of chair. <laughs> no, come on. So, okay, so I think I want to turn the, the rest of this buff in a discussion with you, and I welcome input on uh, what do you want to know from people who have the experience of being DPL in case you want to run for DPLs, so we are here to answer your questions, but also in particular I want to, you to think about the relationship among the DPL and the project, and think about the kind of communication I've been doing and we have been doing, if it has been transparent enough or not, and what do you expect more from DPL than what you have actually got. So, we're open up for questions, comment on this stuff and all this. Whoever has raised the end, I try to keep notes. Uh, I, I have just a different question. Uh, what uh, concerns me a lot is that I have the feeling that half of the DPLs uh, just left Debian. We have Richard Ackermann, um, we have um, yeah, oh, yeah. Brandon, yes, exactly, and uh, maybe, maybe some others are not visible anymore. It is so exhausting that uh, you can't be it anymore. Doesn't the stage answer uh, the question? The, I'm sorry, you are not the right person to ask. Do we have another mic? 
Uh, we need a mic for here, up here, or we can pass this one. We have only one? Okay, I think we can. Um, I mean, yeah, it is very visible that some of the previous DPLs have left the project. I don't actually think it's any more um, a higher proportion of DPLs than any other developers necessarily. It's just you possibly notice it more. I don't know. I haven't actually worked, the stat worked out the numbers. Um, but you can see there are a number of previous DPLs still here. We still, me, B Dale, Ian, and TBM are all here. Me. And, and, and Zach, <laughs> well, previous DPLs are all, you know, we're all still here. We're all involved. Um, hell yes, after doing the DPL job for a while, you, it, it, there is a big potential for burnout. Um, you know, you don't get much rest at all. And I'll admit, you know, by the time I got to the end of my time, I d really did need a break, so I did, I did slack off for a while. Um, but, you know, so for some of us, we're so involved in Debian, we're not going away any time. Yeah, so I, it's really interesting, the things that happen to you the morning after you're elected as DPL. And I had an interesting conversation, actually, with Brandon Robinson right after he was elected DPL. And part of the reason was that I was about to give a talk about Debian at uh, Linux Conference Australia, and since he wasn't able to be there, they expected me to be able to report a few words from the new DPL. And so he and I had a conversation about this, and his sentiment was exactly the same one I had had immediately after becoming DPL, and it was this incredible sense of responsibility. And the reason for that is that I think all of us who have been involved in Debian for a long time, <clears throat> and even those of you who have not been involved for a really long time, understand just how significant this project is in the grand scheme of the free software world. And to all of a sudden find yourself as the person who's expected to be the public representative for the project, the first point of contact for people outside of the project who are, are interested in finding out more about what's happening, the person that everyone looks to to resolve the conflicts, particularly the ones that are not technical and therefore are the most challenging to cope with, the emotional personality and whatever things. Um, it, it, you know, by the time uh, you're actually elected, you sort of look around and go, oh wow, what did I get myself in for? And it does, I think, change your perspective just a little bit on what's important. Um, but I certainly, you know, I was involved with, in Debian long before I was elected DPL, and here I am long after still, you know, <clears throat> hard to get rid of. So I think, you know, to me, to me at least, it's, they're, they're separate. There's no direct relationship between, you know, spending time as DPL and, and uh, you know, I certainly, as, as Steve said, I've had points in time where my level of engagement has ebbed and flowed. Uh, there was particularly a period for a couple of years when I was off very focused on trying to get an amateur satellite project finished where... Uh, my attention to anything Debian related, you know, was probably an all-time low, and uh, I, I don't think any of that's unusual, surprising, or or to be of concern. Just a comment on on that, uh, like a tip or whatever. I decided that if I would have become DPL, I would have stopped doing all the technical work for the for the period I was going to be DPL, and that has been a very wise choice. I think we have all done that, but, you know, they, making it this, this, well, okay, for me it was really clear that, okay, this, from this time, time on I stopped doing the technical stuff, and it's been a very wise idea. It's difficult, because, first of all, you cannot in just one click, you know, orphan your, your, all your packages, so if you look at my DDPO page, I'm listed still in a lot of packages and uploaders, even though I made clear to the other containers that I wouldn't have done any technical work in the meantime. Uh, and it's difficult also, also because, because, you know, in a volunteer project, people always try to get you engaged in stuff. So if you've been working on a package for five, ten years, as I've been doing, even if you made clear that you didn't want to do that for one year or two years or, or whatever it is, people will ask you, can you please do this and do that? And it's not always easy to say no. This is, I think, a, a point where there is a very good you know, risk of burnout. You know? We are all volunteers, so when a volunteer asks you something that you know how to do, saying no is pretty difficult. But trying to do that on the non-DPL st stuff, it's been very helpful for me. Penny. Yeah, I think we can. 
So someone asked on Monday, I think, whether the role was eventually going to continue being sustainable. Um, and so my question is, do you think inevitably it's going to be somehow split or some particular duties offloaded to other roles, so essentially split, and if so, how? Um, as far back as maybe, was it DebConf in Helsinki? I think um, I led a discussion there about this notion that maybe the job had become too big for one person and we ought to consider you know, even the possibility of some sort of a constitutional change to, to going to some kind of a, a, a ruling board or committee kind of structure or something. And then there have been experiments with that. I mean, Steve was sort of on both the, the, the leading and following side of the uh, idea of a second in charge kind of uh, mechanism to try and share the workload some. I think Zach's actually demonstrated what all of us probably knew, which is that you know, the DPL's always had the power to delegate things. And if you are capable of making that sort of mental leap to, I don't have to do this all myself. There are lots of other people around here who want to do things, and I just have to pick a few you know, victims, I mean, volunteers to, to assign things to. Um, it, it's unclear to me, it remains unclear to me whether there's actually a better structural approach than the one we have, or whether what we just need are people as DPL candidates who use the word we a lot more than the word I. So I think there is these two moments in which you can think about splitting tasks. One is going up front and saying in a platform, you know, I will like to, to work with this, 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 and, th and this person. And this is something which I don't think is particularly fair because after all the constitutions put the responsibility on one person. <laughs> But what I would like us to try out is actually to have some sort of committee or board of directors or stuff like this, which is independent from the DPL elections, but is there to actually help out the DPL. So if you look at the governance of more um, young software, free software projects that, uh, you know, that exist at the time, and that exist right now, you see that most of them have uh, some sort of board of directors, and those boards actually have stuff like periodic public meetings, like once per month, where they review what is, what is in need of being, of being done, and they go through it, they welcome questions from people, and all this kind of stuff. So this is something I think we should try, but it's not clear how to go there. So ideally, it should be something like uh, the DPL send a call for uh, volunteers, which are people interested in helping out with DPL tasks. These people show up, get delegated in some way. Maybe we give them some sort of governance, which election, internal election, some type of stuff like that. And those are independent from being the DPL. They are just there to help the DPL. And I think it could be also a good place where to learn more about the task which usually the DPL deals with, and also to be more transparent. Because you know, if you are up to have every single month a meeting where public meeting, well, it can be a way to. You know, be more transparent about what is going on than if there is only one person doing the job. So I think that the uh, main reason why previous attempts of uh, DPL teams failed is that they were, they were mainly about, uh, okay, let's do a team and then we figure out how it works. And uh, I, I think it's something that could work, well, I'm wondering whether something like um, the government could work, whether the DPL would uh, delegate some specific topics to someone else for a um, short period of time. For example, the DPL could decide that it doesn't care about following um, a specific press release. That would take a lot of work from, to, that would take him a lot of time to work on, and delegate that to someone else who will work on that and report to the DPL. And do you think that this could work and how much of your um, daily work could be um, removed by doing that kind of stuff? Hmm. Okay, so um, what I'm a bit scared about when I do delegation is that they tend to be more sticky than what you initially imagined. So doing a delegation is kind of Ahead, so, um, I, I was not thinking of, of um, delegations uh, as in the Constitution. I mean, uh, you don't need to use um, delegations as in the Constitution to do that. You can just say to someone, 
and to the teams, to the people that will interact with him, that you trust him to do that, to work on that for the next two months, and that uh, you will follow whatever it, whatever decide. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're breaking the yeah. Of the Cheers. Um, I think to a certain extent that's already been happening. I don't know how visible that is. I mean, I was trying to get more people involved and in taking charge of yeah individual tasks like that when I was DPL. I think BDL was doing it. Zach's definitely doing it. Um, without doing that, we'd have DPLs burning out every year without fail. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's you know it's the better way to go. I think. Can you give examples of uh, things that were delegated were delegated that way? Um, well. Uh, well, there have been plenty of delegation going on. So I think part of the problem is that actually, f you know, calling for people on specific tasks requires quite a lot of job if, on, on the DPL side. So in, in the immediate, uh, I mean, in the near um, future you decide to do that, it takes a lot of work to actually find the people, decide the breakdown in tasks and all this kind of stuff. So that's why I was trying to see if we can have sort of board which is, um, you know, autonomous which is uh, created some way and there's some way of renewing himself, itself, which is exactly what other people are doing with boards. So, you know, I've been delegating various stuff, I mean, auditing stuff, and uh, I'm about to try to delegate away the sprint stuff. I've got some wonderful volunteers. And uh, so it is going on, but as long as it's, there is the DPL, which is the, the bottleneck in uh, every time, you know, finding a task and delegating, it's, I don't think it's really scalable. <coughs> and also, I think me and you discussed a sort of a govern um, a government for you know a DPL gets elected and create a sort of govern and then it works with the minister or whatever. But one year period is actually very short, and the time it takes to you know create this stuff, it's a good deal of the one year term. We appreciate if people can take notes in this DC11 DPL wannabe gobby document. And, and maybe if I could just add um, what you said about uh, you know those informal delegations. I mean, c certainly when I when I was DPL, I mean I asked people for favors you know constantly, and 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 I I, I knew what people were good at. You know, if if I needed something you know to proofread, I, I would know. You know, I would I would go to those people. You know, if 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 something else needed be, to be done, I would know someone else who I could ask. So. Uh, you, you just don't see those those things because we you know we don't talk about it. It's like a small thing. You know, can you can you proofread that press release or can you uh, you know do you know that small thing? But but I mean, uh, everyone who knows me, um, I'm sure you have been asked by me for some favor over the years. So <laughs> you know that that you know goes on all all the time. Just a return of experience. So I've been, for instance, asking even a bit more heavily in, in the second term. If people is interested in helping out with DPL tasks and want to sort of learn the job, come to me, let me know, and I will be happy to, you know, show sort of to-do list and, or, or, and, you know, outsource to you some tasks. Two people have replied to that, and I've shared specific tasks, but in the end, nothing has happened yet. So it's kind of difficult to do that, and I think it's a problem, because we, we have people that decide to run for DPL last minute without having a bit idea of what is going on, and it's not particularly good for the project, I think. So I don't know if you were imagining um, like every DPL bringing in their, their, their own team, a bit like, say, the American government. I don't think that would really work for us for two reasons. One is the one-year thing that, that's been mentioned. But also, in Debian, we, we tend to create roles and then people stick with them often for much longer periods of time. And that's actually healthy because it means you get people who know, have some idea what they're doing. Um, that does mean that the DPL doesn't really get to sort of, they tend to inherit all the people who are doing everything from before. And um, that, I think that's probably healthy as well because it means that the DPL doesn't have to, yeah, that, that's one more thing that's not on their plate. Yeah. Almost like a civil service. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's this other element of it that um, I think, you know, in the medical profession, you know, the rules start with do no harm. Um, you're supposed to try and do things that make things better and not make them worse. And 
one of the things you realize very quickly, you know, um, if you think about this, you don't even have to be the DPL to realize this, but once you're the DPL, it's absolutely abundantly clear to you, is there are a lot of people who are volunteering to do stuff that isn't terribly visible to the public and yet is absolutely vital to the project. And the very last thing you want to do is demoralize or demotivate those people because in the same sense as, you know, civil service order, hopefully with you know, a stronger sense of reward for, well, whatever. Um, you know, everyone doing these jobs is, is a volunteer. And I think, you know, on some level we have to understand that. We have to honor the contributions that they're making. Um, that doesn't mean don't fix things when they're broken, but it does mean be careful that you understand what's actually broken before, you know, taking some kind of precipitous action. I think there is one question there. Well, actually, there's three questions already from IRC. Cool. Uh, the first one is, one moment, please. Please say we have volunteers for DPL election next year already. Well, the first question was that, was the email address always leader at dbn.org? Because uh, it sounds a little bit military-like. And, uh, okay, I, I guess that B-Day knows that. You know, there's a point in history where the, the uh, new maintainer process was waving and smiling at the right person. There was a point in history where we did uploads to the archive without using cryptographic signatures on the uploads, uh, where there was a single login to the master FTP server that had a shared password. I mean, you know, history is full of all sorts of things like that. Uh, there's certainly no military intent here. Um, you have to pick some token, and in this case, our Constitution refers to the elected person as the Debian project leader, so the word leader comes entirely from that and not from, you know, there's, there's I, I, think, I think, you know, in hindsight, um, calling this person the leader has had some interesting, uh, you know, connotations in, in that regard. I don't know what else you would call this role, but um, it, it's, it's uh, yeah. So, so I'm responsible for, for this. Um, uh, the, at the time, at the time when, I, when I wrote all this down, um, we just had Bruce disappearing off. Um, and we really did have a, a leadership role that was somebody who thought they could tell everybody what to do. Um, it, I admit it didn't occur to me to call the job something else. There is an advantage, and we, having called the job the leader, um, you know, it has to be something at Debian.org. Leader is the obvious thing to call it. The leadership role in Debian is, 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 is really very weak um, compared to most leadership type roles because the, the authority is fairly limited. But on the other hand, you do have an enormous amount of credibility, uh, which is useful both within and without the project. You're really the only person within Debian who's got a broad elected mandate. And so that means you can stand up and you can say, well, all of these people voted for me, so, you know, in some sense, I represent them all, and you, you, you should do what I think you should do, because everybody else thinks so too, effectively. Um, and the other thing that's really useful about this as a term is that it gives some handle for the rest of the world to talk to us. And one of the, I mean, we've not talked about that very much, but, and it's not officially in the list of jobs, but a anybody who wants to talk to Debian really... <laughs> You know, if, if you're some journalist from a trade rag, you've got really no idea what's going on. And having somebody who's called the leader, who's got a fixed email address, gives you somebody to email. Um, and also, it means that you're pretty sure that the, per the replies you get from that person are, you know, in some sense representative of the project and not some kind of wacko. Um, Debian, of course, being a place full of wackos. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the next one is, well, it's actually a question to all of you up there. What was the most unexpected task you did as a project leader? Uh, I can tell you the, uh, most, most of the tasks I, uh, I got to do were actually expected. I can tell you the most unexpected mail I've ever got as DPL was like uh, one week after my first election, and there was something, someone proposing that Debian drop support for the Linux kernel, and switch to Mac, M-A-C-H, kernel, and getting away of all the other kernels because they are crap compared to Mac. 
maybe other is more serious reply to the answer to the question. Um, you know, it's been a number of years now, and trying to remember details is not always easy, but I think the thing that I was the most surprised by generally was how much interest there was in having me go to various places around the world to talk about Debian. And I eventually realized that's the, because my immediate predecessor didn't like airplanes and, and wasn't interested in traveling long distances. So. Um, and then this was also sort of the, fan, fan, uh, the flames were fanned a little bit by the fact that I had good support from my employer for travel expenses at the time. And so uh, I don't think I had any idea when I signed up to be DPL that I would spend, you know, the better part of the year traveling to strange corners of the globe to give talks about Debian. I think every DPL since then has had the opportunity to go to some really interesting places and talk about Debian. Um, and I don't know why I was so surprised by that, but I really was. I didn't expect to spend as much of my time out sort of being a public figurehead and a representative for the project as people seemed to want me to be at that point in time. Um, the thing that actually probably shouldn't have been a surprise but did really hit home um, was when I heard the news about uh, Timo Seufer uh, being killed in a car crash a few years ago. Um, he was a good friend, and obviously, um, just on just on that level, I, you know, it, it hit home. But also to be asked by journalists um, and people outside the project, um, essentially to lead the tributes to him. To you know, like to, to they were asking, how did he fit into the project? What had happened? Um, you know, how would we be hit by his loss? Um, I said it shouldn't have been a surprise, but oh, it was a very humbling thing to be asked about. Yeah, um, I was really surprised to discover how much external interest in Debian there was from people who really didn't understand it at all, and to find myself the contact point for all of those people, and that took up the majority of my time, and I found that quite difficult, actually. Uh, but I'm, I can't remember anything like specific uh, at the moment, but, but I, I think like as a general theme, one thing I, I guess I found unexpected, um, I mean, I was expecting a lot of work, but still um, something you don't see. And, and you know, we, we have had people complaining over the years that the, that the DPL is not, you know, transparent enough, but just how much stuff is going on just to keep things running. And you, you don't see it because there are people who make sure that things don't break. Um, but just, you know, from, on a day-to-day -day basis, how much effort you have to put in just to keep things, things running, I, I guess that was unexpected. Just uh, part of a serious answer to your question. So the amount of uh, legal or legal-like things that, should, that are actually going on, and to be honest, that's also an example of a thing that, you know, not necessarily should be done by the DPL itself. I mean, we can imagine having a team of people interested in this kind of stuff and asking the DPL when they want a decision, but having done all the underlying research work. So this is an example of a task that can be probably, you know, uh, ended off to some other team or the like. Sorry? <laughs> no, not exactly. <laughs> and there was a third one, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, I will ask just later because I don't yet understand the question either. <laughs> okay. What else? Uh, Whistle? Okay. Felipe? Um, about training the new DPLs, one thing that may work at least would be a immediate fix while transitioning for a board or something like that is having the elections a little bit earlier and then having two DPLs working together for a few weeks, two weeks, that, do you think that might work? Well, in t um, even, let's assume that it, work out, it works out. You can have it even without changing the period of the election. You just say that for the first week or whatever, they are both on board. To be honest, even less formally than that, um, I've, I've yet to find any of the DPLs who just vanish and won't talk to you. Um, whether it's before the election or after the election. So 
if you if a, if a new wannabe DPL does want help, I'm sure there's at least five people here who will happily give advice. Probably more than you need, more than you want. But you know, if you ask for it, you'll get the advice. I think it's also a fallacy to believe that somehow you flip a switch and all of a sudden a big change happens. Um, Martin and I were talking the other night, I guess, um, over drinks or something about the fact that um, when he took over after me, I had already made commitments to travel to various places to speak about Debian, you know, at different conferences for maybe six or eight months into the future. You have to because you have to plan these things and the conference organizers want a name and a photo to put on the, the program and, and so forth. And so even just on that level, there's these tend to be sort of soft transitions, but I can't remember any transition between DPLs in the history of the project really that didn't involve a lot of overlap, a lot of communication, a lot of advice and guidance. And uh, you know, I certainly personally feel really privileged to have been asked questions by and had the opportunity to provide some advice and guidance at one time or another to everyone who's ever been project leader all the way back to, to Ian Murdoch even, so. And then I've got an anecdote from uh, DebConf three years ago. I remember getting into an elevator at the conference um, and meeting up with Margava, uh, going down to breakfast, where she told me that morning she'd had a nightmare and, she'd, and she woke up f believing for a moment she was the DPL. <laughs> And it was, it was hilarious. It was, it, was, it was a good joke on the way down to, to breakfast. And she said at that point, no, 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 she would never do it. And yet in 2010, when she did stand in the election, um, I know she spoke to me. I believe she spoke to Bedell. I'd be amazed if she didn't speak to, you know, I know she spoke to lots of other people asking for advice. And we're, I think we were all very supportive, gave her all the advice she needed. Um, we got a great DPL. We, we, we could have had a different great DPL. And I hope she'll stand again. And, you know, obviously, I'll, we will happily support anybody else here who, who, you know, wants to volunteer for a really, really big job. And, and I guess the, the other thing to say is that, you know, if the, the, the people who run for DPL are, are, are really well connected within the project anyway, because otherwise you would never get elected. You know, you, you have to talk to teams, you have to know a lot of people. Um, otherwise, you know, you don't have a chance being elected anyway. So, so you, you have good connections anyway. And, uh, you know, most people are, you know, fortunately we, we get along pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be nice to see some more, like, documentation and, and some more, like, written down, like, some, some of the experience, you know, to be written down. Um, but I think the informal way we have at the moment works pretty well. So, some of you mentioned that it took you quite a while to get set up in your new role. Do you think Debian as a whole would benefit from maybe electing the leader for two years instead of only one? So um, there is, pro I think it would, but it's also quite risky. So I think we have briefly discussed that, uh, starting from an input by AJ in the oh, global, sorry, in the past uh, DPL um, elections. And so the point is that yes, so there is a setup time, and also there is some commitment you make, like as B Dale has mentioned, you you, you make commitments with people, and you say, okay, I'm gonna talk there, and also it takes a while to you know get to know people. Outside Debian, you need to interface with. Can be GNU, can be FSF, can be GNOME, can be whatever big project which want to be in touch with Debian in some way. And at that level, it really gets personal. So it's not that they talk to you just because it's your role, but maybe they go along with you and they will not go along with someone else. So yes, there will be an advantage, but it's also risky because uh, if a DPL goes missing in action like six months after the election, then you have a one year and a half in which he might be not, or he might not be very active. So what we have mentioned is giving some easy, you know, exit way at middle ground or something. Like uh, uh, people can call for an election or you can stand down some easy way, I don't know. I think we did at some point shorten the time periods involved with the actual election process. Yes. I remember a long, long time ago, we started with, I think, three-week chunks or something, so the entire process ran sort of nine weeks start to finish. And if you think about it, that's a fairly significant fraction of a year. Um, particularly, you know, you, you, 
because that's a period of time during which people who are candidates for DPL, I think, think even more than usual about the things that they're going to say publicly, who they might upset with various positions or actions, and whether it's really what you would like or not. Um, the time period of the election itself often ends up being almost a quiet period for the DPL where things don't happen as publicly, visibly as, as you might hope. So I, I think one of the steps in the right direction was doing that. Um, I, I've always had sort of mixed feelings about the timing thing. I certainly felt at the end of a year that I wasn't done. And um, it, it would have been nice to have had more time to, to do more things, uh, not to take anything away from Martin, because I think he did a, an excellent job too. But the flip side of that is you still haven't gotten rid of me. Well, yeah, but, but I was just going to say, you know, you're never done. So <laughs> you know, there's always something to do. Yeah. yeah. So I I'm, didn't have the experience of standing for re-election um, because I basically decided not to. not to. Yeah, exactly. Um, certainly some of our past DPLs have made that look very easy. And... Um, what I want to know, really, I suppose, is whether it actually is easy. If it is easy, then we don't really have a problem there. You can just stand for re-election. Well, yes, you have a point, but still, even when you stand for re-election, the campaign period is uh, some, quite some work as well. So, you know, preparing the platform, answering questions. Um, so competitive this year. Uh, this year, <laughs> but, and still, even this year, it, it took me some time anyhow. Yeah. Because, you know, and then people ask for interviews and all this kind of stuff. So you're right, it's not a, such a big deal, but it can be some, somehow more efficient, I guess. Yeah, uh, the third question from IRC, I just read it as it is. Uh, so this is my first virtual DAPConf. I followed a lot of talks, listening and reflecting shows me a big focus on developers in the sense of contributing code. My personal experience is our coders are really bad at marketing, even marketing their own software, uh, management skills, and so on. Yesterday, I listened to the financial uh, management accounting talk. Is Debian aware that for those areas, you need people with special skill in management accounting and so on? And uh, does the DPL report regularly uh, on his done work? Is there a handover of the business dealings from DPL to the next one? Um, so that part, the answer is yes. Um, those details do get handed over, and I think we've, uh, we've taken various steps over time to try and do a better job of accounting. It's also true that the actual money that is held on behalf of Debian. It's not actually held by Debian. It's held by organizations like Software in the Public mm -hmm. Interest, about which sometime tomorrow I think we have a BOF session uh, on behalf of the project. And um, I, one of the things I wanted to say, though, is that uh, a good friend of mine who's a machinist uh, talking in a uh, news group about home shop machining a few years ago uh, made the observation that the problem is that in any organization you have to make do with the people who are there. And what that means is that um, while as a project Debian understands that there are different skills and different roles and lots of different people uh, with different interests coming together is what makes this thing uh, so powerful, at the end of the day the people who actually are willing to do things for Debian are the ones who are available to do the various jobs. Um, and about the specific point of documenting what's, what's going on, so I've been trying to do that with uh, sort of d daily bits of what's going on, which helps me preparing monthly report, and I hope will also be a good, uh, you know, source of information for future DPLs. And then there is the sort of the mail archive, which helps a bit, but in my experience, is not something you use. I mean, you, you have a look at the beginning to see if there are some to-do to items left or something, but it's not that useful. I just wanted to... Um Get back to that question from IRC and uh, also the discussion yesterday on the finances. I think what we have to realize is that we are uh, not a commercial entity out there that has to perform with other commercial entities. So we might choose to do financial statements, but we don't actually have to do them professionally. And if we screw up, we are not going to lose out on it. 
Um, so this creates a project which on the one hand still means that we are actually focused mainly on creating the best operating system, but also gives everyone a stage to do whatever they want to do. And whether that's accounting, marketing, or I mean, I'm looking at Holger over there, for instance. I don't think Holger was brought up to be a video professional. And I think he is, you know? And that's because of... We have five minutes left, Martin. No, if, uh, I was just going to comment. I mean, <clears throat> I, I think one thing that, that people also don't realize is that a lot of people in Debian are actually not programmers. Um, I mean, if, if you look at the, 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 you know, what people have studied, I mean, sure, a lot of them have studied computer science, but not everyone has. Um, and, and, I mean, I, I agree, we need more skills. I've always been someone who's always told people, you know, don't package, you know, we have, you know, thousands of people doing packaging, you know, you, you have to do something else as well. And, and, for example, in my Debian career, you know, I'm, I'm not famous for packaging, I'm famous for, for other things. So you, you can definitely, you know, be successful at, at those things. And I think we also have in the past made the mistake of electing people as DPL because they were good packages and that didn't turn out uh, well. And I think we, we, we did learn from that. And I think if you look at the, you know, the, the recent DPLs, most of them, you know, are good at, you know, coordination and, and that kind of work. But yeah, we definitely need more people, you know, doing other things. Uh, I'd have a quick question uh, to the former DPLs. Uh, does any one of you have any plans, maybe in the distant future, to run for DPL ship again? <laughs> that is not a fair question. <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> um, you'd have to ask my fiance whether or not I'm allowed to for a start. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I certainly don't have any plans to, but that depends on, you know, like any situation in Debian, you, you go and, and do work where it seems the work needs to be done. And at the moment, um, I don't think that the role of DPL needs my input. Yeah, absolutely, 110% agreed on that. I mean... Um, like a lot of jobs in Debian, you don't do it because you want the fame or the power or the you know or anything like that. You do it because you know the job needs doing. Um, it's awesome to be able to finish the job or no, not finish the job, but do your part of it and hand over to another safe pair of hands. So I rely the answer from Bidel and TBM. They are both thinking about running again next year, and we go ahead with Andrea's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a question. Do you think that the number of candidates somehow the, uh, um, is reflecting the problems we have inside Debian? I remember one election with 10 candidates, and I remember one election with only one candidate. Well, I, I, I think it definitely, I think there is definitely a reason for that. Um, I mean, I think in the past when people were unhappy, um, you know, we had different candidates, and um, sometimes candidates who promise that they would radically change things. And I think, you know, in the recent years, I mean, we still have a lot of things to improve, but, you know, people are really happy. And, you know, people were happy with, with what Suck was doing, so I'm, you know, why would anyone else run, right? I mean, if, if things don't, you know, if it's not, not broken, don't fix it. I think it's also worth pointing out that the fundamental uh, themes that have been part of the various platforms for DPL candidates over the years have all sort of coalesced and converged. We really, if you look, even not just this year, but if you look back a couple of years, there are themes that come up over and over again. I'll be more open about communicating. I'll do more things uh, you know, publicly. I'll, I'll delegate more work. They, these are all excellent themes, but it's really been a long time since we had any feel or need uh, for any sort of fundamental change of direction. And in this sense, uh, I would be surprised if there were lots and lots of people who thought that you know, there was a, a desperate need to go you know, be the person who, who tries to, 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 to lead or, or something through that process. And I think as we've all come to understand over time, the role of the DPL is not necessarily one that conveys 
some huge amount of, of power to make abrupt changes anyway. Okay, so time is up. I just want to, I, do you have a question? I just want to apologize again for not having organized this buff too much, but we provide at least a good show for pictures, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> then I want to observe that we suck at taking minutes, but, and we didn't get at all to the procedures of how the DPL communicates with the project. If you have feedback about that, please mail me or catch me in the corridor. I'm always looking in ways to improve that part. All right, so let's thank the speakers. Coming up next is going to be a, a talk about the NM process by Enrico Zini. Um, thank you, guys.